the enemy. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. Our enemy has many faces. Here are some of his aliases. The devil, Lucifer, the destroyer, Belial, the dragon, father of lies, tempter, the evil one, a roaring lion, the old serpent, the accuser, angel of light, prince of darkness, Beelzebub, the opposer, Apollyon, Abaddon, prince of demons, the adversary, the wicked one, murderer, prince of the power of the air. This is the devil as the world sees him. Tradition shows him with a tail and horns. Actually, Satan originally was the most beautiful creature ever made. Lucifer's position was of the highest in heaven. He guarded the throne of God. His beauty was so great that he had built-in pipes for music. Lucifer had it made. Satan's mighty downfall was pride. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Rebellion started in heaven. A multitude of angels joined him and they departed from God's heaven. They are given a new location. The atmospheric heaven is now Satan's domain. One of his titles is the Prince of the Power of the Air. God created Adam and gave him control of the earth. If Satan could make Adam sin, control of the earth would be forfeited and fall to Satan. The temptation came and Adam fell. Man died spiritually and developed a rebellious nature. Satan became master of the human race. Satan's new title became the god of this world. The earth is the battlefield for the souls of men. Let's look at a picture of natural man through God's eyes. The Bible says he is a liar, whoremonger, double-tongued, backstabber, without natural affection. Every imagination of the thought of his heart is only evil continually. He is a child of Satan. Man's only hope or escape is through the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he receives Jesus Christ as his own personal Savior and is born again, he becomes God's child and Satan's enemy. Our enemy is strong, ruthless, conniving, merciless, fierce, subtle, and is out to destroy your testimony. Satan has an army of demons, devoted slaves, bent on destroying man and the kingdom of God. Satan's power structure. These are princes in Satan's kingdom who have sections or provinces under their control. Principalities. This refers to political realms in which evil spirits work to influence earthly rulers, kings, presidents, parliaments, legislatures, judges, civil officers, voters, party politics, office holders, and the entire range of men and things connected with the government. When the light of the gospel grows dim, the government becomes evil. A large section of Satan's forces are evil spirits of great strength and force. 
Their particular method of operation is to attack the personal feelings and thought life of Christians. How could God possibly save someone as bad as you? But I am saved. I know it. I think. I hope. Or am I? By grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, and not of works, lest any man should boast. Unbelievers are also attacked in this way. The terrible crimes we read about in newspapers are without a doubt, in some way or other, inspired by these evil powers. The method they use will depend upon the individual. Satan attacks the weak and disobedient Christian, dabbling in the occult, into astrology, neglect in reading of the word, loving the world, taking one's eyes off the Lord, lusting, disobedience, pride, confusion, evil thoughts, doubt. How can a Christian get rid of this problem? Recognize his need, repent, Rebuke it in Jesus' name. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from us. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. When a Christian is dead to self and alive to God, Satan will flee from Christians who are saturated with the word of God to who are full of the Holy Spirit. Satan does not attack a Christian without permission. Never overestimate Satan. Never underestimate him. When a Christian is hit by Satan, if he is walking in the Lord, it is always for, the, for God's glory and the Christian's own good. If he is not in the Lord, when afflictions come, and he complains, murmurs, and rebels against God, and loses his testimony. Everyone holds him in contempt. In the Old Testament, in the book of Job, God pulls back the curtain and reveals what took place behind the scenes. What do you think of Job? There is none like him on earth. Let me attack him and see how faithful he is. Permission granted. Job was smitten with boils from head to toe. Curse God and die. Though he slay me, yet I will trust. Yet will I trust in him. Satan attacked Job through his wife and friends. They judged him not in love, but critically to hurt him. At the end of this ordeal, Job was greatly blessed. The devil's attacks come in many ways. Here are a few. Number one, he tries to kill the Christian with crazy impulses. Two, he tries to destroy the Christian's testimony. Three, he tries to make Christians doubt they are really saved. Four, he brings subtle persecution through friends and relatives. 5. One of his gems is discouragement. The instant we sin, we must confess it to the Lord Jesus. He already knows about it, but there is an action taking place in heaven that most Christians are totally unaware of. Here is how Satan appears as the accuser of the brethren. Look how he operates on a Christian. Did you see that? Janet Spencer sinned. She's lost. She belongs in hell. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Father, she has already confessed it. It's under the blood. She's your child. Satan's greatest achievement is that no one believes he exists. A great number of theological graduates do not believe in a personal devil. One of Satan's greatest weapons is religion. Here are only a few of his religions and gimmicks. Scientology, 
Baha'i, Theosophy, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Muhammadism, Confucianism, TM, or Transcendental Man Meditation, Maoism, Judaism, Church of Satan, Unity, Science of Mind, Christian Science, Metaphysics, Voodoo, Roman Catholic Institution, Hare Krishna, Jehovah Witness, Witnesses, Spiritism, Gay Church, Oriental Mysticism, Rosicrucians, Reincarnation, Study of Astrology, ESP, Ouija Boards, Tarot Cards, Palmistry, Black Magic, Satanism, Mormonism, Masonic Orders. They all sidestep the fact that Jesus Christ is God Almighty, according to the authorized Bible. Here is another sneaky trap. The Bible, the Word of God, ridiculous. Satan has liberal pastors scattered throughout the Protestant churches. These are the 20th century Sadducees. Many deny or pervert the following. The virgin birth. The deity of Christ. Christ as creator. The blood atonement. Death, burial, and resurrection. Second coming of Christ. The Bible is the inspired word of God. Everlasting punishment in the lake of fire for the unsaved. If the pastor denies any of the above, then get out and find a Bible-preaching church. Amen. Demon possession is more prevalent today than during the time of Jesus. In some hospitals, physicians are facing young people who have been in the drug culture and into the occult. In certain cases, medical treatment is useless. The physicians are facing the unknown. I can't understand it. Nothing seems to work. Dr. Edward Atkins, MD, faced patients who wouldn't respond to medical treatment or prayer. This doctor actually encountered the powers of darkness and in the name of Jesus expelled them. The end is in sight for Satan. The enemy of our souls is not divine. Satan is only a created being. He is a fallen angel whose ultimate end will be the lake of fire. He double crosses all who follow him. He sets up wars and puts multitudes into hell. He promises power and wealth to those who trust in him. Then he pulls the rug out from under them. He is a destroyer and a cruel master. His followers turn to drugs, liquor, etc. and end up with disease, misery, and eventually go to Christless graves. The Bible tells us that Satan will be conquered by the Lord Jesus at his second coming. Jesus takes over the world government in Jerusalem. Satan is bound for 1,000 years. At the end of the millennium, Satan is loosed for a little season to deceive the nations. Then he is also cast into the lake of fire. This is the end of Satan. All those who died in their sins will spend eternity with him. Jesus is Lord. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms? But if you are a born-again believer in Christ, rejoice, you will reign with the Lord Jesus in glory. Amen.